What's up, squadron? Aviation has given me a ton of amazing experiences. And more importantly, it's introduced me to a whole new family of friends. Join us tonight, because we're cleared direct for some hangar flying. I'm Ryan Dombrowski, and this is Super Aero Live. What is up, Av Geeks? It's Wednesday, which can only mean one thing. It's time for another episode of Super Air Live. And actually, I want to be honest with you, I lied to you. Right now, it's Friday. It's Friday. I'm pre recording this one because I'm going to Wednesday. Things are going crazy. My life is crazy, but I wanted to be here with you tonight, even if it's uh, time travel y, whatever weirdness. Uh, I don't want to, I just want to say thanks to everyone who tuned in last week. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but we had Mojo Grip on last week talking about his sling, talking about uh, just like the growth of his kind of like insanely encyclopedic channel. And the cool thing about pre-recording this is normally every Wednesday lately, something really historic happens when we, when we do the show. So like last week it was GameStop and that's happening like right now as we record it. I wonder, when you're watching this, how that all resolved. Let us know in the comments what happened. Did you get your stonks? Did you flippity-flop the glue? I don't know all the terms. Anyway, enough about that. Let's dig in right now. I'm really excited to have this conversation today about Sims. We haven't talked about that at all. But first of all, check it out. Uh, John's here. Stay level avionics. What's up, John? Hello, hello. Hey, Ryan. Hey, thanks for having us on the show. Really excited to be here. And yeah, we're kind of doing this time travel warp thing, but uh, you know, just great to great to be with the whole community. And definitely uh, a bit of an honor here to to be on Super Arrow Live. And just excited to to be with everyone. So thanks for tuning in. Absolutely. And I I wanted to tell you, uh, I am super jealous of what's sitting behind you. Because I do all. We're going to talk about simulators in a, in a little bit. I want. We're going to talk. I want to talk about your aviation journey first. But uh, everything behind you, like I play my simulators. Play. I simulate whatever on a potato. It's basically a potato. Uh, and actually, oh, I got this thing. See, we're doing it like it's live. And I got this. We're going to talk about this in a second. But let's just tease it. Totally. We'll turn it off. You can tell me more about that Absolutely. in a second. So yeah, yep. I play. I do all my simulating on a potato. It's over. It's kind of like over here, and you. It looks like you do it on like a spaceship. Yeah, we, you know, we just got a little little setup here. You know, it's it's kind of funny. The the spaceship we call here is is, is my office, and I, I like to say <laughs> this whole company got started because I like to work during the day, and then as you said, play at night. And so we, uh, I needed a solution for that, and, and we'll get into kind of how how the whole company started and, and how we got to where we did, but. Yeah, you know, just a little monitor. We got a little computer over there, and uh, you know, if you get your hands on the latest Nvidia graphics cards, maybe you're you're lucky, and maybe you get a processor. But it's incredible. I mean, just all these parts, the shortages, uh, but the excitement around the sim and the community, and and what Microsoft's doing in the space, what X Plane's been doing. It's it's definitely probably the most exciting time in the last twenty years to to be involved with any bit of flight simulation. So yeah, well, I absolutely. I mean, I, the. One, I've got a 970 that I'm that is is barely working in my machine over there. But two, I've got a lot of like gamer dudes, like Call of Duty bros, that at least for a couple months we were flying in formation in Icon A5s in Flight Simulator, right? In Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the the excitement is there, and it's it's expanding beyond the genre of like the traditional the traditional like pilot or like sim nerd or whatever you want to call it. So yeah. I think it's really yeah, cool I mean, too. The, yeah, the accessibility of it's incredible. I mean, they're bringing it to Xbox here coming up soon too. I think they just launched VR. So it, it the, the whole Super development awesome. group, Asobo, I mean, they're just driving this thing forward. I don't know if people have had an opportunity to see, but they've got their partnership series. This is fantastic. It's real aircraft manufacturers. It's software developers. It's weather engine creators. So they are really working across the whole gamut of the simulator, creating these partnerships. And that's really what drives the whole thing forward. Without these partnerships, we don't get the development and consumers don't win. But really, uh, it's an exciting time. And and yeah, it's, as you mentioned, it's like in real time, right? You and your, your buddy are flying there. I, I had a buddy in Jamestown, New York. We both loaded up. 
he was literally right next to me in the sim in real time moving. He flipped his nav lights on. The nav lights went on on my screen. I mean, it, it's just, it's like the fidelity is just like the real thing. And that's what's so neat about the space right now. Absolutely. But let's talk about, before we talk about that, I just want to talk about you for a second because you, yeah. you're you not, I mean, not just in, in the business of, of helping people achieve their simulator dreams. You're also like an like a pilot like you're like a an honest pilot uh tell me about let's talk about like the the john origin story we talk about that every week on the yeah. show like what's your aviation right. origin story yeah yeah we'll, we'll talk about how we got to the dream and, and whether or not the dream got realized or not but basically you know it started off uh when i was just a little kid growing up in michigan we happened to live on a graph strip it's two mi5 it's in the grand rapids uh, GRR class Charlie airspace. And so Western Michigan is where I grew up. And this is uh, our neighbor, actually, Dan, Dan Wallace. And Dan was uh, a great alcoholic community member throughout the area. And he actually owned the airstrip. It's called Somerville Airstrip. Oh, and awesome. Dan said, Hey, like, you want, you want to take John up? I think I was maybe 10 or 11 at this time. This would have been probably about 2000, uh, if, if I had to guess. And so my parents, I think, reluctantly were like, okay, sure, why not? We trust Dan, let's do it. And so we went up. This was, I think it was like a 152, uh, something like that. It had a, a huge nose cone on it, if I remember. But maybe it was a 150, I, I can't remember. But basically, uh, you know, this is where it started. And, and he took me up. And I think I just at that point, I was really kind of hooked. And I said, hey, this is, this is really neat. This is fun. And I guess I'm, I'm rocking a Bose aviation headset there. I'm still rocking a Bose aviation headset nice. today. So. Uh, you know, Bose marketing was working back 20 years ago. Uh, but yeah, it was just a lot of fun. You know, we just popped around the city and, and got to just take off and land. And there's a little river at the end of uh, one of the ends of the runway. So, you know, you, you depart, you go over this tree line, you see the river and you're just sort of flying. And so it was a very neat experience. And at that point, I really enjoyed aviation. I, I'll be honest, I kind of thought, you know, hey, well, I go to ERAU, Embry Riddle, do something like that. I was always, always technical oriented. And, uh, and I thought, you know, maybe we'll do that. Uh, 9 11 kind of happened, sort of put a damper on just that whole idea of doing that. And I went into a, a technical field of, of engineering and kind of currently have a day job of, of managing engineering right now, but then uh, doing the state level avionics as well. And so that was really where it got it, it going. Uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, this picture here, we're, we're departing oh. out of there. And can't believe I found these pictures. I mean, these were these, these are, are just, amazing. Just here. Yeah, and I actually looked up the the tail number. I think the plane has been since repainted, and it's actually in California now, uh, if I if I had to guess. But the airstrip's still there, and my whole dream was I'll call it you know for twenty years was I'm I'm going to fly into this airstrip. That was literally literally it. And uh, and in 2019, I ended up uh, achieving that and doing that in July of 20, 2019. Is that? And did so, you send me a video uh, yeah. of that? I think I sent a video of the departure. Uh, it's it's one of those one of those videos there. Well, here and should we so, roll it? Should yeah, show, I mean, yeah, I mean, go for it. Yeah, we're it was, skipping it was ahead a, a little day. bit. Yeah, no, we are skipping ahead, and that's totally fine. So, uh, yeah, shoot that. Oh, look at wait, video. but first of all, I mean, here we go, like Oshkosh, you know, I adorable. Mean, like, yeah, look at that. I mean, my mom <laughs> would be proud. So, yeah, there there we are at Ash, and and just you know, I just I always enjoyed the aviation thing. I kind of got into the Sims. I mean, this was like flight simulator, like 2004 at the time. Right. So this was just very basic. And yeah, here, here we are in July, 2019, when we actually flew the plane in and parked it right there. Uh, Let me park at the neighbor says, leave it at the grass, you know, leave it, leave it in the backyard. Oh, okay. That's Sounds amazing. We'll leave it there. Let's roll. I yeah. want to roll that departure um, just because I, that puts yeah, a lot of, yeah, you sent me this it. cool, yeah. you were like, you're like, dude, I do. I like, I do real world flying too. And I, I'm curious yeah. Uh, I've never done a departure like this, and I just want to give you props. I think your training, which we're going to talk to about in a second, probably helped uh, where you absolutely, trained. Absolutely. Um, so there. Yeah. See, see, I'm being a good host. I'm teasing stuff here. Let's watch this clip. You are. This is. When And I and I had us muted there for that, but you were I think you were giving yeah. some some play by play. What what were you saying about the play by play there? Yeah, I was just saying I think you know on that uh, short, I'll call it vertical rate or low vertical rate, 
I think that was at the point. My I think my mom was having a heart attack probably as as we were departing. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was it was it was a great it was a great lesson on just DA and heat and how that impacts aircraft performance, which obviously you go through and you study. And we calculated the runway takeoff. We went all the way to the end of the grass strip. the The biggest thing there is is even when you you don't think. Um, you know, and I really don't think you got to use the whole runway. You may think in your head, Oh, Hey, I don't need to go all the way down the runway. No, you need to go down the whole runway. Right. Even if it's grass, of course on pavement, you're going to get a little bit better performance. You know, you don't have as much loss, but, uh, but you got to just use the whole runway make sure you do that. And, and we took the whole runway and you can even see there, I think it was like 3000 foot strip. We needed pretty much the whole thing to get going. And so, uh, the, it was hot that day. It was just one passenger. Uh, and myself flying, but yeah, you've got to, you've got to basically, you know, stick with the performance and, and calculate it and know what you're going to get and, and know when you should start rolling, you know, keep that nose wheel off the ground. We did some flying in Alaska with Chris Palmer, which we'll get into, but you know, all about ground effect, right? Keep that friction of the nose wheel off, get that ground effect, create that lift, build that momentum and then kind of get out of there. But you can see there, the performance was just slow climbing out of there. And, uh, and so it was just, you know, the real world flying, that's, that's really what, at the end of the day, we're all about, I mean, that, that's, right. that's, that's the end game for me. It's, it's seeing people achieve a private pilot certificate, right? So we've got three goals, right? It was create an awesome product. And I'll tell you about why we created the awesome product. Uh, but then it was get people really familiar with avionics through our product and through other sure. partnerships in the industry. And then it was get all this stuff together and then go realize a real private pilot certificate and then apply that and go get your instrument. I mean, that was, that's really kind of the whole cadence and the goal. Like that's when I get the email from customers that say, Hey, we bought your panel. We bought the avionics. We integrated the whole thing together. I'm now doing instrument training in the comfort of my own home. I'm not putting it in my logbook, but when I show up to my next lesson, my instructor is completely blown away with everything that I've learned. And you're literally almost not teaching him, but you're showing him the ropes on, Hey, I know how to do this departure procedure in the G 1000. I know how to do this arrival. Uh, you know, and just, just working through all that it's making people's training way more effective. It's actually ends up saving them money. Our panels like an annuity, right? Like it just keeps on giving. You're just going to keep, <laughs> you're just going to keep use, as long as you use it, you're going to keep staying fresh with it. And then when you go into your own home, excuse me, when you go from your own home to your own plane, and let's say you got G1000 at home, you got G1000 in your plane, it, it's like, you know, you're just picking up where you left off. And so that that's really, really where where it is. I mean, ultimately, this all rolls up to safety, right? General aviation safety, the, the incidence rates are just really high. And so how can we start to remove all of these dynamics uh, really out of the equation and and make it where, where pilots are feeling much more comfortable at 3,000 feet, at 4,000 feet, things like that. So, yeah. You know, I, and it's interesting because I think there's a lot of value to that uh, just in terms of the, you know, when I, the Cessna I used to fly, they upgraded the panel and all this Garmin 750 and all this like crazy glass that we weren't used to. And there are training apps for that stuff, right? You could get a, tra- you know, like an iPad app that's like, oh, this is what the buttons do or whatever. I found those to be completely worthless. Like, I was like, I, nothing's going to matter to me until I'm in the aircraft. And so to have something at home that I could goof around with without, you know, blowing flight time, burning av gas. Uh, I could see the value in that for sure. So yeah, I'm tracking. Yeah. No, and, and those, yeah, those, those little touchscreen things while they're cool, you know, it's on a 2d surface, right? It's not, it's not really three dimensional. It's, it's when you start spinning the knobs, pushing the buttons right. that you're understanding the menus and getting very, very comfortable with the menus that, it's, it sounds kind of wild, but you know, people, you watch people try to navigate an MFD on a G 1000 and they start pushing the bottom right knob and they're just all over the place. They go on from, uh, the flight plan section to the settings of the G 1000. And so it's like, just make it really simple where you're doing the same thing at home and then you just know it. And then, you know, if you, if you get a new, uh, approach from a controller, you're able to switch that approach really quick in your G 1000 bring up the new ILS, transition over to whatever approach that is and just do it seamlessly. And if you're not doing it fre- frequently, you can effectively kind of lose the proficiency element of it. Yeah, and so that's, that's where it, it just really all comes together. So we're just a part of the puzzle, right? There's obviously a lot of avionics 
partners within this. Um, you know, everybody from Avia Tech to Real Sim Gear. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of different components. You know, we really just kind of integrate all the different pieces together for for people. Uh, you know, to to have really their their home dream sim setup. So. Oh, that's great. So, so we. Yeah. I, I want to. I, I, <laughs> we we've been jumping excited. around. We've been jumping around the all the place. place. Yes, it's fine yes. though. Here, let's talk. Oh, no. about, let me I'm show this the. Is me. Let, I'm I'm all over the place. High dude, high ADHD. That's me. You're talking. I'm tracking <laughs> you. You and me both. Let me. Let's talk about. So you 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 had this childhood experience, which yeah. is pretty cool. Living like living on that grass airstrip, and then separately, awesome that you were able to go land there. Uh, I don't have anything like that. Like the closest I have is champion American champion aircraft is like in our back was in our backyard, kind of like a mile or okay. two away. When I grew up, I didn't even know it was there until I was an adult, which is opportunity missed. So I got to go land there, Fox River Airport. I uh, landed there okay. once, and it was sketch because it was hot okay. also. But anyway, hot, let's talk yes. about where you did your training. Friend of the show, that yep. that view might look familiar to some people. Yep. Yeah, so Chris Palmer, angle of attack. Um, he was instrumental in, in many different segments of my my flight training so i did the majority of my flight training here in the chicago land and that was you know pretty flat a lot of concrete and and it was, and it was nice it was it was a good experience i had a great instructor who's, who's now flying with air wisconsin but just a, a really really uh, wonderful full time and kind of in that process though i took an opportunity i received an email from Chris actually reaching out and saying, Hey, I've, I've seen a little bit of kind of what you're doing in this space. This is really neat. Do you want to kind of collaborate? And it was funny because at the time there were a few things that I was really bad at doing. And I'll be honest, I'm still bad at doing them. I'm, I'm not great at these videos. <laughs> I'm not great at YouTube. Um, and you know, fortunately I've got a, a wonderful video editor that, that helps me with all of these things. But I, I noticed that Chris was very much about the content awesome channel, just a great guy and sort of took a leap of faith and like leap of faith and said, yeah, like, let's, let's get together. Like, let's collaborate. That sounds a lot of fun. And so I go to Alaska, we build him a whole panel for some of the stuff that he has. I mean, this is literally outside of his office in Alaska. And, <laughs> and there's a moose. moose. Right. I mean, and they're just hanging out, right. It's just like, this is normal. And we actually, we were driving back to the airport at 10 o'clock at night and we almost hit a moose trotting down the middle of the highway. We're going like 65, trying to get to the airport. Uh, Raven Airways, we're like calling the Raven check-in desk. And we're like, hey, we're gonna be there at like 10.02. And they're like, oh, no problem. We'll hold the plane. It's the last flight to Anchorage, no big deal. And we're like, oh, okay. Like United out of O'Hare, yeah, that thing's gone in two seconds. <laughs> so yeah, it was wow. just a totally different like atmosphere. And I loved it. I honestly loved it. We're, we're actually gonna go back up there probably this spring, pending all this COVID stuff and, and where things net out there uh, and do some more flying. but. I get, I get up there with Chris, uh, we're doing this panel piece and, you know, he, once again, he kind of had a lot of these different components and, and he's like, Hey, you know, I want this to be part of really our overall curriculum. And he's got a wonderful ground school, uh, private instrument commercial. And, you know, he's, he's teamed up with a lot of these different, uh, avenues and, and said, yeah, like, let's, let's, let's do this. And so it, what could have been, what I will say a, a kind of businessy thing turned out to being a, a wonderful friendship. And I think both of us are really excited about that and, and still are. And we text uh, quite a bit about different aviation things and kind of what's next, but uh, he, he's just a great friend, a great family guy as well. Uh, I've got three kids, you know, they're five, three and one. So we've got our hands full. I think you've got some kids too. So I think we, we all know this is just a, a very hectic time right now, but right. Uh, we get up there and, and then we had an opportunity to do some, uh, some real world flying too. And so we, we went over to Seldovia, Grass Strip. If you've seen a lot of his videos, you know, that's a popular spot. He, he pops yeah, over that's too. huge. I know, yeah, I know Josh, Josh Flowers went up over there as well. They did a, just a, a wonderful segment. I, I call it the Josh Flowers Aviation 101, that geographic worthy, <laughs> like Alaska segment. I mean, seriously, some of these drone shots that are coming out of here are just absolutely unbelievable. And they did an awesome job with that segment and some of the, the planes on floats and just all that kind of stuff. But we got to enjoy part of Alaska. I would just say for anybody in their training, it's so important to mix it up, right? And and take take an adventure for three to four days and go to a completely different scenery. You know, get with a school, get with an instructor and everything and get very comfortable and familiar with the terrain in the area. 
and uh and and go just change it up oh yeah this is good this is a good story so yeah so i wanted i I didn't mean to change the picture but like that's really good (laughs) advice but then there's other things you need to learn while you're there that only happen up there yes and this is a complete example of this so we he's got his plane store outside okay i was a two four two three uniform or two three two four uniform i can never get it right uh i think it's two four two three but basically it's sitting outside and it is cold i mean it is like really cold and maybe like it's it, i can't remember it. it was cold okay it was like february february march and we're like okay we're gonna get this thing heated up with a heat up blanket and a generator well then the generator doesn't work and we're like okay uh what's the next thing he's like well i got this box and i got this this gas thing and we can light it and we can generate some heat and then we can route the heat up into the engine shroud and, and kind of get the whole the whole thing warm. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, that sounds good. And so we're sitting here trying to start this thing and we're sitting here trying to ignite it. And then, and then we get the flame and we're like, we got flame and then it would go out again. And then we're like, oh, we got to get the valve pressure just right. We finally got it where we get a consistent burn on this thing and then get the heat traveling up, got everything warmed up charged up the battery, I think off of his car and away we were flying. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was a, a fun little three hour. Yeah, here it is. We're, yeah. There's yeah. the shot of the, there's yeah, the shot yeah. of the car. I love it. Like, I yes. love the scrappiness of that. I also think oh, like it's amazing. Yeah. In, I think in the, in the Midwest, there's just no need for that. Right. We would just be, we would just be calling somebody or can in the flight. Right. Like we just be yeah, like, oh, yeah. I guess oh, we're yeah. not, just not doing it today so yeah yeah no you just just say hey, i don't know i think that's we'll... super cool sorry I'll, oh, let's it was, go back it was, to that no it, oh yeah no it was fun yeah i mean it, it was the, the, it, it felt good too like that was the thing like chris and i are working together with this we're like we're gonna, we're gonna make this work i mean understand though we weren't pushing the envelope so hard that that safety was ever a concern right i mean chris and i are saying hey look you know we're gonna we're gonna do what we can do if this doesn't work we, we both know that there's more important things that come home to at the end of the day. So we're not like, Hey, we, we gotta go fly. That, that was never the the thing here. And I just want everybody to know that it, it was always, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do this. And if things work well, great. But if not, you know, that's okay too. Uh, but it was a beautiful day. You know, it was actually three days of clouds and it was, the weather wasn't great. And this was actually the last day we were, we were together to go fly. And it was like, that's like a, re- that's beautiful. Like a- that's yeah, like Chris, a real Chris pilot this, photo. This, well, yeah, I know. I, 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 That's yeah, like I, Top I, Gun. I feel, it, it was cool. I felt really cool about that. Yeah, that was <laughs> – yeah, yeah. I love but that. It, I don't know. He's got the snowflake falling. I don't know how Chris captures these things. He's amazing with the camera. He really is. Uh, but he captured all the elements. And then and then he does a couple little edits here and there. And then, yeah, you look like Maverick in two seconds. It's incredible. But, yeah, no, that, that was just a fun shot. That was at Seldovia. So you can see Seldovia behind – me there there's a little river that kind of runs directly to the uh the the strip there and so you kind of you come in down and you're kind of turning and lining up and everything all at the same time right over the river it's, it's a very very scenic beautiful uh shot there and then it's it's a grass strip it's kind of a mix of like a grass and soft and so you, you you're really practicing not only short field but also soft field at the same time so yeah that's cool kinda, that's a, i think that's a bucket just, yeah. list strip for me Oh, you got to do it. Yeah, you got to do it. I mean, it, it's there is just there's there's nothing else like it. And you have to mix up your flight because at this point I was getting kind of burned out on my flight training. I'll be totally honest. I was like, this is this. We got a lot of the stuff down. We're building some of the hours. You know, we were done with cross country. And so it's kind of we're into the end there. And this really gave me the push and the stimulation to say this. This is what this is about. This is beautiful. This is the exploration that is truly limitless. And right. when we tie that back to the Sims, that's, I think, what really got me going into The Sims is that it, it was truly limitless so many years ago when I, even when it was Flight Simulator 2004, right? It was like, hey, I'm going to go fly to the pyramids. I'm going to go fly to, you know, Russia and we're going to go fly around Russia and just kind of like explore. You know, that was when a couple of the scenery things in these Sims were, uh, were neat and you could go see like a, a St. Petersburg, you know, chapel or something like that. And you just go and explore. And I think that's really what, at the end of the day, aviation is really all about. It's this, it's this limitless exploration that that you can go. And when you're at 4,000 feet, nobody's text messaging you. And, and it's just really enjoyable. Right. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's in, just the views are incredible. And and also, as a fellow, like, Midwesterner, you know, like we don't have we don't have any terrain, right? Like, no. The, the tallest mountain in Wisconsin is not really a mountain. I mean, it's called yeah. Rib Mountain. 
Uh, it's actually not the tallest place anymore. There's a new tallest place, but I don't remember. They fit, they measured it again, and it was like five feet taller at this other place. <laughs> the, but place like, the place converged a little more? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. But it's just like that you've got these. There's Finally, we have a picture of Chris. There he I is. hope he's in the chat tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he will be. It, it uh, Chris, Chris <laughs> is... Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a great, he's a great guy. He's a great friend. And, uh, the, the content he's making is wonderful. And I love seeing the, the family connections too with his content. It's, it's just totally cool. I mean, I, I saw his, I don't know if you've seen his last video, so he's landing on a lake. Once yeah. again, you talk about like, where are we going to go do this stuff? Like landing on lakes, mountains. I mean, it's just a totally, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a very neat place. So, yeah. So you do that, you go up there to Alaska, yep. crank yep. it out and crank then it out. You- you did and your check ride have, though back here in in yep. the Midwest. Yeah, so we do our check ride, and uh, some good stories with the check ride. Uh, but basically, we we go up to Oshkosh on a, on an IFR plan. We're looking at the weather, you know. So so booking these check rides was like you had very short windows, as you know. I mean, some of these people are like check Germans, and and there's just only right. so much time. You gotta you got to be ready to go. Right. And so I, I ended up going to, to Oshkosh to, to do that. And Osh, that's why Oshkosh is really just a very special place to me. There's a, there's a DPE up there called Dick, uh, Dick Hanusa. Dick, if you Google him, he's kind of like an aviation legend, uh, to be totally honest and, uh, just a, an awesome guy. And so we go up and, uh, we fly up on a plan and the weather, I was just literally looking at the weather for like four days straight. And I was like, yeah. there's going to be a window from like two to 4 PM where the ceilings are going to be high enough at that time. And then all the ceilings are going to come back in as we get into the evening and stuff. And it, it just, it worked. It was, yeah, land on the purple dot. That's it. That's so cool. (laughs) Um, and so, so we did that and I remember we, we, we landed, you know, obviously we, we do all of our, you know, hood time and things like that and all the maneuvers required and and we land and, and, you know, congratulations, you know, you're a private pilot. I'm like, what like i'm just like screaming on the inside I'm like what like holy cow we did it and uh and so it was just it was just a a great process and you know the the oral prepping for the oral you know obviously the 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 oral section of the, the check ride is is a uh you know there's there's a lot to that right and, and preparation is key and i think the interesting thing is there's so many resources now with the different ground schools you know chris's ground school uh, other ground schools as well there's uh, just a lot of content on, on YouTube as well. You know, you can see, you know, mock, right. mock orals and stuff. And you can really, really prepare very well. You know, it was just everything from having, you know, your pages tabbed out in your, your P-Hack and your uh, your systems binder and whatnot and your Cessna 172 information manual, just all these kinds of things. And the more organized you are, you know, the DPEs recognize that and they recognize that you're taking this seriously and that you are invested into it. But uh, it's it's very very easy for a DPE to to find somebody that's not invested in actually doing this and and so you you don't want to be that guy, um, but yeah no it was it was a great process and then and then we flew back to Chicago after after doing that in Oshkosh and came back we are yeah gassing it up so yeah that's awesome no yeah yeah it was you know it was cool Oshkosh was cool it, it and then it was neat because then we went up to uh, took the kids up there I think for Air Venture uh, shortly after a couple months after they just had a blast at Air Venture. Yeah, is that really when you that. was that the year that you and I met? That's when we met person. up. I think it was because it wasn't last year, so it had to be yeah. 2019. Yeah, I remember like and, it was like me. Yeah. It was like a. It was it was like a, one of those weird uh, blind date things where like Instagram DMing, and yeah. I was like, "Meet me by the Twin Mustang," and you're like, "Okay, <laughs> I'll be the right there." <laughs> <laughs> that was that was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, and then yeah, and then you know we just kind of stayed in touch ever since and everything. But yeah, that was uh, yeah, meet at the Twin Mustang, and and it was unfortunate with Ash being canceled last year, but looking forward to it this year. I think I think hopefully it should be on, dude. I, I mean, we'll I'm, see. Got right. my fingers I mean, crossed. I mean, they're I mean, announcing, yeah, same. they're announcing acts, and then simultaneously it's like, but the Brazil variant and the South African variant, and I'm like, oh, I just oh, want to yeah, go to Oshkosh. Yeah. Can we just wait a right. little bit? Yeah, yeah. So Before we have panic, see, so. uh, pandemic, you know, beta version or whatever. Right. Can be. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's what? What's the next morphed, morphed version of it and everything else? But yeah. So we we do the check ride. We finish that up, and then uh, and then, you know, I guess how we got to that whole point though was I'll back up a little bit. 
spent some time uh, living in Europe. I actually lived in London and Munich for, for about oh, three to four years from after I graduated in 2010 to, uh, to about 2015. So that was a ton of fun. Lived over there. And then, and so I got this, you know, just beautiful fiance in Munich and we're meeting in Paris and we're meeting in Rome for Holy Week. And uh, this whole company thing is just completely impossible without her support. So uh, she's just been an absolute blessing. It, it's kind of funny. We're, we're on, on weekends, we're downstairs boxing up panels and, and bubble wrapping things and getting out orders. And it's like, holy cow, this is, this is a team effort. You know, nothing happens alone. And so, uh, you know, lived, lived over in Europe. We moved back. We wanted to start having kids right away. We knew that. So we have had three beautiful children, two boys and a girl. And, uh, and then, you know, we were both kind of, you know, continuing to keep doing our day jobs. And, and then I had, uh, at my day job, I actually had a, an individual say, Hey, I want to take you somewhere for lunch. And I was like, what? Like, we're going to go somewhere for lunch. I said, okay. Like normally we go to like just Mexican place or American food. We go to, we go to Aurora municipal airport and I'm like, okay, this is cool. Well, it turns out he was in a flight sims. He knew I was in a flight sims and he's like, Hey, I'm starting my flight training here. I'm like, Oh, okay. That's, that's neat. And he's like, why don't you cool. come for a flight with me? I said, okay. And then all of a sudden, all, everything starts connecting, right? You know, and where where we grew up, and and you know, I was kind of said, well, hey, you know, maybe this is actually is something that I want to do. And so we uh, we started we started our flight training, and it was at that point that I realized the gap in the training, and the gap was, I have three kids, I'm you know real busy with a day job as is everybody else. My free time is like eight thirty at night until like twelve one o'clock in the morning. That's like what Preach. I call John. Yeah. Time. And, and so yeah. I said, okay, so now I want to go get my private policy. Like, how am I going to make it work? <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I started researching, right. Cause I'm driven by efficiency. So I started researching and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. how can I do some of this stuff at home to make myself more effective in my training? Kind of what we talked about a little bit earlier. And, uh, and so I, I start looking around and there's like no really good, like aviation panels out there. Like there's some things that were like outdated from like 10 years ago. And, you know, some people were starting to make some of these avionics systems and I was like, there's nothing really great here. And so I, uh, I get a hold of a couple of my friends and I say, Hey guys, I had this crazy idea. We're going to have to make a lot of capital investments, but are you open to it? I think there's a market for this. And they were like, we trust you. Let's try it out. We're young. Let's, let's try it out. And so we get a whole bunch of machinery and equipment that we actually use to produce our products and and we still make them you know by ourselves to this day and uh and really you know we start making these panels why i make one put it on the internet some guy emails me he's like hey this is like really cool i really want one of these too i'm like oh okay sure i'll make you one you know i, I finally sold like two or three and my wife's like hey you should probably like make this a business like it sounds like maybe th there might be something here i said yeah there, there might be something here and so now i have you know my panel at home I'm using it from nine to 11 at night. And then the following day I'm going with a lesson with my private instructor, uh, you know, call it like four to 6 PM. And I'm applying all those things that I did in the sim previously. And he's like, wow, your radio calls like spot on. Like, where did you learn that? I'm like, well, you know, I'm enrolled in this pilot edge thing and they have these different ratings. They have these 10 different ratings of, of different things. He's like, you know how to talk to ATC doing your whole cross country and asking for flight following and things like that. People get so, stressed out about phraseology with atc i mean yeah. i mean <laughs> and and, yeah. and i mean they would literally they would literally avoid airspace to not talk to atc and it's like guys time out like atc there is they are a friend they're here to help with these things i've gotten requested through in a 172 through the o'hare bravo multiple times and uh people are like what you got through the bravo i'm like what are you talking about i just simply said it hey gotta I want, i'm requesting the bravo i'm going to jamesville he's like all right yeah through through the o'hare class bravo and, uh, and so, so, you know, we've now knocked out the whole talk to ATC thing. Once again, I talked about taking rid of eliminating these variables, these stress pressure points, you, you start continuing to eliminate these things. So now I got the radio thing done. Now I'm, I'm working the G1000 setting up different, you know, plans and stuff for where we're going to go. And, and, you know, we're just flying DFR at this point. So it's like, you know, direct to and boom, you're done. We're not, you know, shooting approaches here. But, uh, but then we're starting to, you know, do some approach work and things like that and tune it in the localizer and just all these things. And, uh, and, and, and the, the training was so much more effective. So now I'm able to realize my private certificate because I have made a little bit of an investment up front that's making my training more effective and thus reducing time and making it such a huge burden 
on, on what I want to do. And so I, I started selling a couple of these things. My friends and I, we always used to say, hey, have fun and stay level when you go fly. Oh, there that was it the is. Phrase. I was, that was going to be one of my fun. questions. Yeah. Have Which, fun by the way, I've been level. shown, I don't think we've actually said yeah. what it is. Like, yeah. this is the yeah, thing. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So, we, yeah, we, we, and we've sold hundreds of these things all over the world, okay? From Italy to Russia to, you know, Singapore to the U.S. I, I mean, predominantly we sell in North America, but, but th- this is it, right? So we make that panel that you were showing. This here, you can see what happened there was all those components got populated in. So typically a, a customer of ours, they will own multiple of these components, whether they're yokes, throttles, different variants. And what we do is we make a, a fully fabricated panel that is custom to their their hardware. And uh, we finish it off beautifully. It's powder coated. It's got a, a wonderful glare shield and a nice edge trim molding. Uh, it, it's really a lifetime product is, is what we've made. And so they, uh, they put all their stuff in there and then all of a sudden they're realizing basically a really high fidelity, high quality simulation experience. That was really one of our our main goals was you see a lot of these home brew setups where you got like wood connected, you got like corrugated board over like one opening that like used to be there. Like the things like held on by like two screws. And I was like, this whole like thing needs to be cleaned up. Like I love the home builder crew and market. And that's like a really fun niche thing to do. But for like the average Joe guy where you literally just want to pick it up place it on your desk, have fun with it from call it nine to one, and then put it back <laughs> away and then have work in the day. This is the ideal solution. And so we, we've made a ton of different variants. You can see here, I mean, there's some, uh, you know, just, they're just all, we support G1000 uh, mainly, but we do steam gauge. We do a whole bunch of different stuff and we support, you know, the real some gear avionics that go in there. And it was just all about making a really high quality product that somebody would be proud of. And what, what I call is quote unquote wife, wife approved. Right. So if, if it's wife approved, it looks good. It can be a piece of art in your, your office or wherever you want it. But uh, it, it's just all about the quality at the end of the day. It's quality customer service and uh, and kind of just, you know, pushing the envelope there. That's that's really what we do. So we make so, these things once a month is basically what we do. And, you know, we'll make, you know, a good share of them uh, once a month and, and then they ship out a few weeks after. But, yeah, that's so cool. So I guess one of the things. Uh, that I wanted to ask you was, so I, I've got the potato, right? The machine yep. that I built like seven years ago, which is impressively still holding on. Like it's still running stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, medium low settings or something, but it's still yeah, holding yeah, on. But, yeah, yeah. 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 We're playing. Right? I got kids now. I don't know. Like whatever. Yeah. Um, you're right. Yeah. The, the question I had is, you know, I'm dabbling in, you know, for me, it's like I've got like the the one joystick. I've got a pair of rudder mm-hmm. pedals that I can never seem to get right. And then there's like the little yeah. throttle. And I look at the stuff that you're working on or the, the systems that my friends are making. And I go, whoa, like that's and I, you know, I honestly believe like I get a similar value with my kind of like I don't have any wood cut yet, but I get a similar value <laughs> yeah. to them. But I think that elevating ha elevating it to a different uh you know to a different quality level to help make the i'm trying to think of what the word is right to make it more lifelike to make it more like one-to-one about what i'm experiencing you're talking about like in the top of the show we were talking about you know you got the g1000 at home and your and your sim setup you got your g1000 in which if you're lucky enough to fly an airplane with the g1000 right <laughs> but like you yeah, got that right, at, yeah you got that yeah. at the airport and now you can you can pre-fly, you can run approaches, you can get the buttonology all correct. So what, like, if we were to break it down, if someone is watching this, maybe they're a aspiring aviator like you were a few years back, what, this feels to me like, a, it, it definitely has been valuable to me, simul- running sims at home. What advice would you give to someone who's like starting out? Like, how do they, how do we do this in a way that isn't going to be frustrating? That isn't going to, you know, there's a lot of, there's like, when I look at this device, I'm going to be honest with you, right? When I look at this, I see a bunch of holes that I have no idea how to fill. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Of course. So so how do we get started in that? Yeah. Yeah. No. And and this is just, you know, one variant that we've done. We've obviously done hundreds of different variants for people, but really where you get started is. And, you know, the, the whole thing, I think it was the industry was really fragmented for like a solid, like 15 to 17 years. We finally hit a bit of a plateau in component hardware that 
make this very affordable. So the first place to start is you obviously need a computer and then you need to get some hardware, right? Like a yoke and throttle. And so there's a company that's, that's released a very affordable yoke and throttle to the marketplace. They're called Honeycomb. And you've got the Honeycomb yoke and throttle. And with their throttle, you can actually do a lot of different configurations of planes. You can do like jets from general aviation to multi-engine. And so for somebody starting off, it's a very, very affordable, high value return on your purchase, right? You're talking 250 for a yoke, 250 for a throttle, 500 bucks. So you start there. Now, I'm not saying you add on a panel at that point, but what you do add on at that point is you add on Microsoft Flight Simulator and, uh, or, or X-Plane, but you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is just an absolutely incredible tool. I, I really call it like the ultimate VFR flying tool. I mean, that's really what it is. And so you add that on there and you get the basics down of making some radio calls. You know, you add in your headset. I got my headset over here. Uh, but basically you add in something like Pilot Edge, you add in VATSIM. And now you're making radio calls just as you would in the plane. And you're getting even more comfortable with talking to people over ATC. And so now you have this experience that for the most part is really good. I'll call it sans the avionics, right? So without the avionics, you, you don't actually have, you know, a G1000 or steam gauges in front of you, but you're just kind of looking around and it's more of a, an experienced game at that point. It's not really so much the simulator. And sure. so you're just kind of enjoying the game. You're, you're moving your views around with your mouse and, and things like that. You're, you're not really, um, you're just kind of enjoying the game and, and appreciating flight for what it is and, and what this call it game slash simulator is bringing you at, at this point. And so that's kind of what I call like tier one. You sort of just start there. And, and we don't really play much in that. You know, we've got a, a couple of little brackets that you can like mount onto your yoke and throttle if you want to do that and touch screens and stuff. But we don't really play so much there. Really where we play is, is bringing in that, that home uh, experience and really the experience from the plane and bringing that home and actually training with that and staying proficient with that. And so there's uh, multiple avionics manufacturers. And so, you know, we were kind of at tier one. Let's go up to like tier two now. And so let's say you do have a G1000 plane or a steam gauge plane or, uh, with a 430, 530, 650, 750, something like that. And real sim gear make a ton of this hardware. And so they make all these different components. They plug in via USB, HDMI into your computer. And, uh, and then what our panels do is our panels, they have all the cutouts for what specific hardware you have. And so we have a, a few stock configurations. I will tell you the, the G1000 is by far the simplest way to go with all of these things. They're typically a little bit more expensive, but by the time you add in the cost of an iPad, you know, the multiple different connections and different pieces of hardware for like an audio controller, a nav unit, a comm unit, uh, you start adding all these other things in. And then before you know it, you're basically at the same price of a G1000, but the advantage of the G1000 and the SIM is that it's way more simpler. Everything's integrated, your radios, your nav, right. your autopilot, everything's just integrated into the G1000. So even if you're just using the G1000, but maybe you're flying steam gauge in real life, the G1000 is probably going to be easier for you because you're trying to gain the principles of, of what you're flying, right? So like looking at the attitude indicator, looking at your air speeds, doing all that kind of stuff. And you have to just kind of get in the mindset that you're using it to really understand the principles versus so much like the visual display. Uh, but G1000 is definitely the simplest. And so people typically, what they'll do is they'll take what they, they purchased and call it tier one, which is that yoke and throttle. They'll add on the panel, which then integrates with their yoke and throttle. And then they'll add on the avionics as well, call it like a G1000 system. And so now they're kind of at this tier two level, which is really at this point, you know, something that I'll call it, it's, it's a very shareable thing. You can take a picture and send it to your buddies and they're like, oh, wow, holy cow, this guy's got like a flight simulator in his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and so the, the cost of that's roughly like 3,500 bucks, right? You got 500 bucks on a yoke and throttle. You got a thousand bucks on a panel. And then you got 2,000 bucks on a G1000. That's that's kind of the the the, uh, the 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 street price for all this stuff, right? It's about 3,500 bucks for the whole thing. So this is this was just a, a, a panel we did for Chris Palmer. Chris wanted a steam gauge set up. So he, he was running an iPad to run the steam gauges and then he wanted a 530 in there and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we, we do it. We do a ton of other, you know, G1000 configurations and got a lot of different videos of different configurations and hardware. But yeah, basically, you know, you start with the open throttle and kind of build, build up from there. And, sure. and that's, uh, that's kind of where, where you go at that point. I would say the G1000 is definitely the most, 
most popular system to use and yeah do you find with that you know for instance i'm thinking about the aircraft i fly right now part of me feels like well it sure would be cool to like i mean obviously they're like with garmin because what's yeah. interesting to me is that all of this is kind of dictated by these real real aircraft companies as well right so like Garmin, there's a certain design language that spreads from, uh, you know, the G1000 to the 750 to all the various other products they make. Um, You know, when I think about my aircraft right now is it's primarily steam gauges with GPS and things like that. Uh, Newer radios, newer, smaller, not a 750. Uh, I can't remember the number right now. Someone in the chat will get mad at me about that. Um, (laughs) But like the, is it better in your experience to say, go to the, go to the G1000. It's simpler. It's going to be, it's going to be kind of that, the top tier of what you would experience more or less in the real world flying environment. And then those skills that you're developing will, will go down or is it, is there value in me saying, I'm going to like replicate with, digital steam gauges what my cockpit looks like which way would you lean there yeah i i think it's it's both and i think what i find at least is it's driven more so from people who already own aircraft and they're like i want to replicate this exactly like i have a 430 and a 530 and a gma 350 i'm not changing my panel anytime soon those are that is the stack that i want coupled with steam gauges on an ipad if you're more, call it uh, entry level training, just getting into this stuff, I would say uh, go more towards the G1000. Okay. And the reason for that is just because it's simpler. And if you can understand and kind of harness the, the, the principles there, they will apply to, to the other aircraft. You talk about the design language. I 100% agree. I mean, the buttonology, you, you get enough, you, you, you use enough of these avionics you start to figure out, you know, direct two buttons, flight plan, twisting knobs, you know, pushing it in and then pushing big knob to move other places in the menus. You start to really understand those. I feel like the G1000 is definitely the the simplest solution. I would say other people, you know, they they are training with a very specific aircraft and they're not gonna rotate between other aircraft. That aircraft might have a 650 and 750 and they're just like, hey, I I just want a 650 and 750, that's all I want. You know, I recognize G1000 might be simpler and easier to use. But they they just say, hey, they're they're very. This is the plane they're going to fly for call the next five six years, and so they want it to just be as close as possible. Uh, so that that's what I would say. I, I'd say the the data output element of it is also kind of interesting, and hopefully I don't get too much into the nitty gritty here and in, into in, in the weeds. That's what we're here for, man. We're here for nitty gritty. It, it's it yeah it, it it's it's evolving like weekly. To be honest, I mean I mean this stuff is just continuing to keep evolving and. Uh, you know, there, there's a company that they run their G1000 with iPads, and then those iPads wirelessly connect to the actual G1000 mm. bezel itself. And okay. so this is a really neat concept that I've kind of unlocked in Microsoft Flight Sim, and, and I think it is of high value, and that's why I want to talk about it. But basically, I fly G1000 in real life when I go fly a plane. And so maintaining my procedures with G1000, putting in my arrival, putting in my approaches, all of that flight plan management I want to do with the G1000 and I don't want to see anything different. But when I get to a sim, I honestly don't want to fly around a Cessna 172 all day. Like it's slow, it's not fun. <laughs> like it's just like, yeah, it's cool, but it's a Cessna 172. Like it's, I, I don't need to go 90 knots. I want to explore more. And so what I do now is I load up Microsoft Flight Sim and I load up the plane that's the Cessna Citation CJ4. And so the the reason this is interesting is because the reason those iPads are important is because there's actually a bridge that's taking all the telemetry data and all of the, just what the aircraft is doing, altitude, speed, everything. It's outputting that to the iPads and displaying that information on the iPads. Yet I'm flying an aircraft that doesn't have a G1000 in it at all. It's, you know, totally it's like own FMS system and everything else. And so when I change the altimeter, when I hit 18,000 feet to 299 or two, it changes it in the SIN as well to 299 or two. And so everything is completely connected. 
And so now what I can do is I can basically continue to maintain proficient in the G1000, but I can fly a plane that's not G1000. And I can go from Pittsburgh to Boston in an hour and 15 minutes on VATSIM with some friends talking to controllers. And it's like the complete experience. And so to me, this is, this is the biggest unlock that we've had to date in this entire thing. It doesn't matter if I'm flying a 747, a CJ4, a Grand Caravan. It's all going to replicate and display on the G1000 itself. Does that kind of make sense or am I totally losing you? <laughs> no, I think I – you. well, I can't speak for the people in it's the chat. Like, I think it, I'm tracking – Yeah. I mean, I think the basic concept to me, if, if I understand it correctly, right, right the, the basic concept is like, hey, we're going to keep the interface that you use on a daily basis yep. constant. And then that doesn't mean you still can't go goof around in a jet or whatever because Correct. you're going to be able to use the buttonology you're used to to – interface with that and and i know separately yes. like i know there are probably some folks who are really into that like fidelity of clicking all the various i mean that's part of the fun of being a pilot right the more switches the yeah, better yeah. but like they want to like right. and that's why it's fun to have these these physical devices the yeah. having the you know some people want to go through and make sure they click every switch or whatever knob in the 747 and that's I think a totally valid way to experience as well. That's part of the fun. But if yeah. we're using it for training or you're trying to expand, I, I get what you're saying there, right? You use a G1000 yeah. on a day to day basis. Why don't mess with the buttonology that you're used to so you can keep that proficiency going, even if you're goofing around in a citation or something? Correct. You got it. How would exactly. I do? Exactly. That was exactly it. You're, <laughs> you're not limited to the aircraft. You got it exactly. <laughs> and, awesome. and so. That, that at the end of the day though, equals, it equals fun, but it, it actually equals relaxation to me. I mean, it's, sure. it's really what it does. This, this for me is, is I am the most relaxed when I'm flying a plane in real life or I'm enjoying myself in the sim. And people look at me and they're like, what? What do you, like, that has gotta be the most stressful thing no, in the, the world. it's the same for me. I'm, I'm completely relaxed. I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's just, it's just, is what it is. So. That's that's kind of the, the the big unlock. You know, you talk about platforms, X Plane, Microsoft Flight Sim. I mean, this Microsoft Flight Sim train is moving. It has full development behind it. it. It's amazing. I mean, if you haven't experienced it yet, purchase yourself a copy, download it, install it. Uh, it's pretty big in size. Uh, it's like 120 gigs or something like that. But the, the it just looks amazing, and it's so exciting to see what is going on with with the development behind it, uh, the planes. It's it's just like it just keeps going. It, it, I, I can't actually put it into words. I'm kind of at a loss for words. Like I, the fact that this even exists in the way that it does in 2021 is is really groundbreaking. I mean, it, it you have cities that are completely mapped like they are in yeah. real life. Mountains. I, it's like how and and so it, it's it's very it's very neat to to be a part of that right now. How is sure. the it so, was bleep bloops yeah. and typing. Uh, this has been awesome, I, and we've got to wrap up uh, in a minute. But yeah. I wanted, yeah. I wanted to, yeah. I want, I, I'm hoping we can play a quick game. But before we do that, if people want to, I guess I, it's a, just like top three pieces of advice, and maybe, yeah, like, where do I go to learn more about this? Because I, I will tell yeah. you, I'm one of those folks that's like, goofing around, and and separately, like, I hope more companies work with the simulator people to make more aircraft. Cause I feel like I half the time I'm shopping, right? I'm like, Oh, like yeah, this yeah. Savage cub thing is insane in the simulator. It must be that way in real life. So, but if for me to get <laughs> yeah. started, right? Like if you had like top three pieces of advice, places for me to learn more about this, like what would you, what would you give? Yeah. What advice would you give? Yeah. I mean, we, we try to create a lot of content on, YouTube to help answer a lot of these questions. And so what we do is we will typically take a configuration of hardware, like the different yoke, the different throttle, the different avionics. And we actually try to do like a whole demo video with it. And we kind of just walk somebody through, Hey, this is the setup. This is what it's doing. We load it up in the simulator and then they can actually see it in action kind of right there. And it's like, Oh, Hey, yeah, this, this is kind of what I'm looking for, right? Here's a steam gauge setup. This is what I'm looking for. So our outlet to help educate as best as possible has been through our, our videos on YouTube. So I would say 
pop over to there, look at the channel. Full disclosure, they're not amazing. <laughs> the videos, I will tell you, I, I, I try to do my best, but as I mentioned, like I got three kids, I got, you know, there's a lot going on. Everybody's got a lot going on. Uh, so I literally shoot these videos at like 10, 11 o'clock at night, sometimes into like one o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and that's the time to do it. So head over to the YouTube channel, take a look at that learn a little bit more there, you know, the Instagram, we, we post up, you know, different little things, you know, all the time as to what, what we're doing, but you know, we're, we're, we've kind of turned into a little bit of this consultative role too. So like, just send me an email and I'm happy to help answer any questions that you have. Hey, I've been thinking about this G1000 system. Do you like this one instead? And, uh, and I can help answer some of those questions as to, to why they're good and why okay. they're bad, you know, cause I've, I've been able to use them all. And, and I'm happy to just help be a resource for that because my greatest enjoyment of all of this is when somebody emails me and says, hey, look, I, I added all this stuff and I got my private certificate today. I'm officially a pilot, like I'm overdrawn. And I'm like, that's it, you did it. You, that was, the, that was the, the full culmination of the whole thing. And, and so I get a lot of energy built up around people and them going on that journey and them starting that. And however I can help be a part of that process, uh, I'm, I'm all for, so. Yeah. Dude, that is like what it's all about, right? Like, I don't know. It's a community. It's a community. We want to make you know, it bigger. And you know who taught me yeah. that is, 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 is people like you, Ryan, people like Chris Palmer, people these you know, like Steve. You know, Steve and I, we, we got together in Toronto. We did a whole panel for yeah. Steve. And, and, and then we did a Flight Shops giveaway panel. And the Bruce brothers in Canada were totally excited about what they got. And it's, it's a community. And that's, that's where it is. You know, I, I'll, I'll, real quick, you know, I was uh, talking to, if, you know, like Premier One driver, Greg Mink. Yeah. Like a lot of people know, know Greg Mink. Awesome, awesome guy. You know, we were texting very, very early on. And it's not like Greg and I are, are texting frequently. I, I, don't, I don't talk to Greg a lot. And that's kind of the point is I was some random dude. And I said, Greg, I have this idea uh, in aviation. You obviously have so much background in this. You're an incredibly successful businessman. And like, what do you think about this? And he gave me a couple of pointers here and there. Uh, somebody who was completely unknown to him. And he gave a couple of pointers here and there as to what we would do and, and kind of we went and executed some of those things. And and Greg gave us some of that advice early on. And so it's it's just a community that is incredibly uh, gracious with their time and giving back. And it's it's a wonderful community to be a part of. And that's exactly what we want to do too. And and that's just that's just what it is. And and to your point, yeah, we want to grow it. We want more people to be able to experience what this community is like because it's an awesome one. And it's that's yeah what it what makes it grow so gives me it's given it's given back more to me than i've put into it and i, yeah, I mean i put I, a lot I, into it but it's given it's given back a lot yeah. more to me so i, I totally agree uh you I, ready to play yeah, a game yeah. uh, sure let's, all right let's so this game's it. called short <laughs> final there's no oh, right boy. answers there's no points and you you win for sure so uh <laughs> We get this going. All right. Well, I, I like winning. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't lose. All right. Okay. John, right. favorite aircraft, civilian, civilian aircraft. Oh, c- civilian aircraft, Grand Caravan. What about military or, aircraft? Uh, SR-71 Blackbird. Ooh, no one's – I don't know if I've ever said that. You were going to add something about the Grand Caravan? You into well, it? I, ju- I, just like, I just like the utility of the Grand Caravan. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, super it's cool. Just, and I love the PT-6. I'm like PT-6 Nation, like hashtag all day long. Like – Love PT six. What about uh, your favorite thing to do in a simulator? Yeah, uh, shoot approaches. There we go. What's your What's the coolest thing you've ever done in a I guess a, a real airplane? Uh, in a real airplane, coolest thing I've done. Uh, I guess I'm not that cool. I'm not doing barrel rolls. Uh, you, f- you flew in Alaska. Come on. I mean, yeah, Alaska. That would have to be it. Seldovia. Come on. All right. Uh, One last one, even though we're out of time there on the timer. Uh, Are you track up guy or north up guy? I am a north up guy. Interesting. I think I am too. Whenever I ask that question, the chat just explodes. So I like to ask. North up. North up. North up. Never eat. What is it? Never eat shredded wheat. Northeast, southwest. Oh, north up. I don't I, know that's how I remember. That. Never eat shredded. Never eat shredded wheat. That's how I remember it. I don't know if I've <laughs> ever heard that before. Uh, yeah. You learn. I learn yeah. something every day. Yeah. Cool. Dude, this this has been awesome. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. No. To, thank you. This has yeah. been this has been great. 
uh, thank you so much for giving us the advice. I will make sure, folks, that like we'll put the the link and stuff down in the description so you can link through and see, obviously, what John's doing with Stay Level, but also uh, his website's got a lot of resources for people who want to get started um, that I've, I've noticed before, so that you can go dig into that. It's definitely provided, sim, simming has provided value to me. One, stress relief for to talk about, but two, as I get ready to get back in the air after like a COVID break, um, it's helping me just feel like that chair flying, it's helping me get ready to like put actual air under the wings. So I'm on board. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you for again for having me. You know, this has been awesome. Uh, Super Arrow Nation, you know, thanks for, for joining in and, and tuning in and uh, you know, we'll see you. Stay level. Awesome, dude. Everybody else, John, thank you so much. Everybody else in the chat, thanks for hanging with us tonight while we did this pre-recorded one. It's so awesome to have you. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit tonight about about running a sim at home. I'm excited to get blow that up a little bit more. I need to. I, I, my geek cred. I'm, I'm low on my geek cred. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, share it, like, all that jazz. And if you really like what we're doing, we've got the Patreon thing. And most, uh, I think basically every Wednesday night, after the show, we're running a little after show where we all hang out and talk to way, way too early in the morning <laughs> about aviation nerd stuff. So I uh, couldn't do this show without the support of those people as well. So thank you to them. Everybody, we'll see you next week. Uh, I don't remember right now who's going to be on the show, but it's going to be awesome. And uh, <laughs> make sure to make sure to join us. Have a good night.